Hello everyone, this is Eric and this is the Static Site Editor product and design weekly call on Tuesday, May 26th, uh, Wednesday for you, Michael, uh, yeah. the 27th. And um, to start off, the, the only other FYI I have is that the Jamstack virtual conference starts tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if you got registered for the um, for the other, did you, did you say you were gonna try and attend one of the workshops? Yeah, I'm going to attend one of the workshops on Thursday on um, the static site editing experience on, cool. I think it's Magenta or Mag some other platform that I'm not too familiar with. So it's cool. um, be good to see how they approach the problem. Yeah, excellent. Uh, that'll be really valuable. I'm glad you're doing that. So tomorrow, Jean is going to be sharing his screen. It's totally optional to join in, um, obviously, with your time shifted uh, schedule you may not join at all but if you were to want to hop in we'll, we'll most likely be jumping in and out and socializing as we watch the um, sessions i have a couple conflicts throughout the day so i won't be able to do the whole session um, but yeah. it is kind of uh it's pretty much my whole work day so there's some good overlap i will try and uh, join where i can and follow along on there's gonna they're gonna have a doc where they're keeping notes takeaways and stuff um, so that's good. I'm excited about that. Hopefully, you know, someday we can be involved in the GenStack conference and, and be a more active participant, but it's good to be there and keeping an eye on uh, what's going on. Uh, oh. The other FY, oh, sorry, go ahead. Did you have any? No, no, I, I just uh, acknowledged that that's cool. That's a good yeah. uh, future vision. Um, I guess the other FYI is Eric Eastwood's still out of the office, so there's no Gitter updates this week uh, as far as like um, news or anything. Um, so we can just go right in and talk to any of the static site editing stuff. Um, earlier today, I was mentioning to the team that I really only had two, uh, two things top of mind this week. The first is that um, that website status page, whatever project that we can use for dog fooding. Um, I posted a link again in, in the agenda for feedback. Uh, my only real concern is that as I was building out the outline, it felt an awful lot like a blog and we're not really set up yet to be a blogging platform because we can't create new pages or new posts from the static site editor. I don't want to mm -hmm. try and embrace something that's too complicated. I'm going to make it like harder than it should be. So I'm, I'm trying to rethink the structure a little bit less around like weekly updates and more around like, you know, a single page, like monolith source of truth with maybe um, an opportunity to sometimes add new pages or, or have maybe each person have their own page or something like that. You know, I don't want it to be a live journal either, but it's gonna, um, it's gonna need to be a little more simple if we're gonna do it soon, but yeah, do ideas. Um, my, my idea on dog fooding this, um, was insp is inspired by this kind of list called the like 250 things that architects should know. So and this came up in a podcast um, and I'll add the link in here later, but is this idea of like 250 things that um, product designers should know. And then like, I'll create like, a list of like maybe the top 50 and then leave it up to the rest of the designers to come in and add the next points to the list um, as a way to like, uh, get around that needing to create a new page. Um, so um, yeah, I already created a project for it, but I haven't like created the page for it yet. So um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'll probably get it done sometime this week or in early next week. Cool, I just, I just found that list, I think. Yeah. And I posted a link, it's just really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's cool. Uh, I think the, the more we can all start using it, the better. I don't want to put too much more time into um, overthinking our structure. So um, I'll probably get a project stood up so that we can all start contributing to something hopefully this week. And hmm. we'll just take it from there. It'll evolve just like our product evolves or our feature. Um, so that's kind of uh, a 
side note though, my major focus this week is ensuring that we have everything buttoned up for 13.1, uh, making sure that all the issues are up to date after all the like uh, really healthy and, and helpful discussions in the, in the comments, make sure that everything's ready for development. We had a review with the engineers this morning. It seems like we're in a pretty good place. And then I'm gonna start thinking about 13.2 planning, um, which really after some conversations and, and, and hard thinking about what's gonna be a requirement for getting the static site editor into the handbook, I think we're really close. I, th I, I, I feel like we chose the right things to focus on in 13.1 and if we can ship them all, meaning uh, images, non-markdown content being handled in some way and um, the uh, front matter being excluded from the WYSIWYG editor. If we can ship all three of those in a, you know, usable fashion in 13.1, then I think we could really just roll right into the handbook. And there might be some edge cases that we might find uh, over the course of integration that there's more work to do, but I don't, I think if I sit here and, and look at the handbook pages and think about it, uh, I'm not seeing any other major red flags, but I, uh, I position it to the team and I will open it up in discussion in an issue um, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But I think those, if we can get those three things, like maybe for a section of the handbook even, I think we could get it done in 13.2. Right. So, so the idea is to get it in for like the kind of idea is like single page edits, right? We're not looking at more multi edits or revisiting, rejoining an MR to right, add more right. changes to it. And as I even, yeah, yeah, I, I think absolutely. I mean, all of that stuff is helpful. And I think, um, mm. so I, I was having a discussion with Eric Brinkman about the difference between viable and valuable and how that's difficult for me to under to wrap my head around here. Um, mm. Because my my instinct from, you know, previous roles and previous products that I've managed is to, you know, put our best foot forward and, and polish the use, uh, the user journey, at least one user journey all the way through the, to the end to make it really lovable. And, and like, mm. that's what we can ship with. But clearly, you know, and, and you know, rightly so that's not the GitLab way. I'm not, I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just saying it's, a, it's something I'm trying to um, still come to terms with because as I'm thinking about our viable maturity, it's very much tied to the ability for somebody on the GitLab handbook to use it at all. Like to, mm -hmm. to make edits and maybe it's not the exclusive way or the primary way even, but it's, it's usable end to end and mm. people choose to use it maybe like we don't have to force them to use it i think that would be a good bar for our viable but but i was looking at it and continue to, to struggle by looking at it as more of like a minimum valuable product which is it's doing all the things that people need to do to see value in it and we can still get there i mean we we want to be valuable for everybody but i i, I think getting in the handbook sooner than later is going to be um beneficial for uh, us as a team to, to figure out those edge cases. It's going to be beneficial for the GitLab team as a whole for editing the handbook and the public if they want to edit the handbook. Um, so single page, no like integrations into the MRs, but a really clean, really, you know, usable path towards a, a single page edit using a visual editor, the WYSIWYG editor, and mm -hmm. uh, without destroying any formatting or like YAML or or Ruby code that might be sprinkled in. I think that's that's really the that's the the bar I, I'm trying to set. And then um, if we try to do it in 13.2, that buys us a whole other uh, milestone, a whole other iteration to address feedback and um, edge cases as they come up, and still hit our quarterly goal for being viable as a as a feature. So I, as I said, I'll, I'll mention all of this in an issue. I, I actually, there's already an epic for integrating into the handbook. So I'll just reuse that and, and just tag people in it um, and start listing like the pros and cons and what exactly needs to be addressed. 
and then we can we can discuss if there's anything I missed or as okay. things come up, um, we can have the discussion there. Uh, yeah, but I'm excited. I think once we get in the handbook, we're going to get a bunch of really valuable feedback. And I guess uh, what we talked about was like maybe just putting it in like the product directory or, you know, one section of the handbook so yeah. that it's not all of a sudden everywhere, but we can just try it out. It's kind of almost uh, like a, not quite an A-B test, but you know, like a, an 80-20 test or something like that. Yeah, I, I think if we just limit it to certain pages that we handle, I think leaving it open up to the sections is probably a good thing because um, some of the feedback of uh, in the like Slack channels that we've had is like someone actually tried to use it on their mobile phone. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, right now we're not focusing on the mobile editing experience, but like leaving it open like that addresses, like brings awareness mm -hmm. to those areas earlier. Um, so I think, I don't think we need to you know, lock off section, but yeah, maybe types of content, like, you know, if it's a dot ERB or anything not marked down, then we'd probably try to avoid it. And yeah, I think we should be fine and just see what happens. I'm just making a little note for later, um, but I do want to ask about dovetail. I, I just, so we can get back to it. Um, but uh, this might play into the other thing about the code owner's file, like um, if this could be a good place to to highlight the different editing options other than putting them all the way in the footer. But mm. um, well, yeah, we'll get back to that. So uh, Dovetail, I'm sure you're aware, is being rolled out company-wide. I think it sounds like a really promising tool. Sounds like you had a good experience with it. Um, I was a little confused because I finally got around to accepting the invite and I didn't see anything that you were, had been doing in it. Um, yeah. But it might be because I accepted the invite from the UX research team and not from you. Um, it's fine. Um, so what happened there is when I created it, it was like outside the world of GitLab. It was like in the trial world. So it's in like my own little workspace. So um, I'm working with Sarah to work with Dovetail to like get that project migrated over. So that's what's happening in that scenario. Got it. Uh, I figured it was something like that because I had two email invites and I just clicked the first one in my inbox, which was the most recent one. And then I went and I was like, oh, I got to look for this stuff because it sounded really interesting and I just hadn't gotten around to, <laughs> to digging mm -hmm. into the stuff you had done and then I couldn't find it. But uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for that and let me know if I can help. Uh, but it sounds like you've got it under control. Um, so I'll hand it over to you and then we can yeah. maybe come back to this other one last. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do it like that. So this Friday I'll be out. So I'll try to get stuff sorted out uh, by then. Um, on Wednesday, your time, um, the, there's going to be a UX showcase. Um, I'm going to talk about the static site editor, um, the kind of, like the problem space that we're we're in, why we're trying to tackle it, and like a brief demo of the experience on my made up store, uh, a like made up kind of site. So, yeah, that will be on on the UX showcase playlist by by like Thursday probably. Um, so yeah, just an FYI on that standpoint. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm I'm real excited about the the direction you're taking the UX. So that'll be a good a good discussion, I think. Um okay, so yeah, not to make this all just me talking at you, but to clarify the um so John had, had pinged you on this issue related to the handbook and the request yeah is kind of a long standing one. And so I'll just give you a little more context on the, the handbook UX and then, um, so yeah. Anyway, the, the handbook UX is what it is. Um, a lot of people don't even know that, that there's edit links way down in the footer because our, our footer, our global footer is very tall and mm. those links are like 
20 pixels down on the bottom. Um, but they're very useful links. So some of the suggestions that we've had uh, um, that predate me at GitLab, and then also I try to just kind of consolidate them um, and, and distill them down. It's just basically making sure like the metadata of a handbook page is easier to find. And in that idea of metadata, I'm, I'm throwing in the like the link to edit, the link to the, the source file, um, a link to donate, a link to uh, potentially a link for the code owners, which is what this issue is about. And then I think this might be a good opportunity to just um, pull all that out into a, a design element that's somewhere on the page that just gives some meta information about when it was last edited, all the, all the stuff I just said, um, who maybe was the last one to edit it. There, there's some challenges there. Um, uh, Vasily, I believe, was already looking into uh, showing like who uh, the date of the last commit, and there's a challenge um, because of our, our CI um, process and, and the way Middleman works with it. I think we mm. don't get direct access to that data, but um, I think this might be a good opportunity for us to just take a uh, look at those edit links and maybe for the pages that do support the static site editor um, just add a little extra button it's like you know now you can view this the code source you can open in the web ide or new like a new badge <laughs> try out the new static site editor and um, mm. that could be a way instead of a floating button on the uh, like our default styling on our template a floating button on the bottom left we don't need to use that, so we could um, we could kind of tackle both things at once. Uh, the so that's the context. But the real question is, I don't know if anybody's talked to you about like design improvements to the handbook itself, as far as like um, how it's been, how your time should be spent on it. If somebody else uh, should be thinking about this, or if you have given this any thought. Um, no, uh, zero thoughts uh, given to it. I just saw uh, Jean's um, mention of my name and I was like, I had a bit of time and I tried to understand what the problem was. Um, yeah, I just assumed that if Jean was looking at it then I would look at it because we're on like the same team. So it was more like an assumption from my side. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's the, the a safe assumption. We, I want to be. I think we mentioned this when you started. I want to be mindful that you weren't hired to be the designer for the handbook, and technically, the DRI for the UX, I believe, is still marketing. But in the spirit of everybody can contribute, I think it might benefit the statics like editor group to think about pulling some of this editing metadata up, and we could at least maybe have a proposal for what it could look like. And then um, probably um, get it in front of some people at marketing and uh, and anybody else on the UX team that might have a stake in that. And then um, we can figure out who would implement it. And it would most likely just be a pretty straightforward front end thing that, we, that our team could take on. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I think, uh, if we if we keep in mind that it could be a way to highlight the static site editor, I feel pretty good about taking this on and at least um, giving it our our take, and then see what mm. other people say. Yeah, the way the way I was framing it is that like the the goal of surfacing like who's the, the responsible individual from the code owners is helping with that MR step of our our kind of flow. So if we look at the whole kind of value stream, it's like, I want to make an edit. Where's the edit? Like I want to jump to that spot to make the edit, hence like in place editing or jump to line or whatever you know, mm -hmm. we're going to do. But then afterwards, you know, it, the way things are set up in a company like this, you know, it's not directly like published live right away. Sometimes it can be, but sometimes it needs to jump through like reveal process or approvers. And that's when that MR kind of step and one of those problems is like, who is this person? Um, so I figured like, 
um, the way I kind of shaped a kind of time and like value was like, this is adding value to our kind of flow and it helps um, someone else. That's kind of like a good byproduct, but mm -hmm. like the way I saw it was like, a small step towards suggesting who should be a reviewer because you know you make a change you like call it a spot a typo which is like a, a probably can be a common use case but then like for a small typo I'm like who do i tag <laughs> sid like should right because right. Sid's like the dri on every on most of these things but it could be someone else and so um having that other person might be like the better choice um yeah, so that's I, one I agree. Way. And the, there is another issue and another discussion about code owners in general and how we apply it to the handbook. Um, mm. I'm not sure if you've seen the issue, but it, it actually covers that exact use case. Uh, I mean, a typo that somebody, somebody should be empowered to see a typo, fix it, and merge it themselves. Mm. Um, but there may be some pages in our handbook. There are some pages in our handbook that actually probably should have review on nearly every change, um, legal, uh, you know, people ops, things like that, that, that could, um, could impact us if, if somebody were to go in and just like make a change willy nilly, remove some language that had been approved yeah. by legal there. So I think that the idea of a code owner or like a, a file lock is being tossed around or in the handbook. The thing that I'm trying to wrap my head around with how it applies to the static site editor would be, uh, my gut would be architecting this so that it would just be something we write in the YAML. That's like the front matter. That's, that's like, um, you know, owner and it's got a, a, a GitLab handle. Um, but our code owners file by nature is not in the front matter. It's like associated with the code base. So I wonder if this is the beginning of, of uh, the gear spinning on a deeper integration into the the code base so that we can, have the static site editor actually pick up on configuration that might be in the code owners file or the um, the GitLab CI file or some some like config file uh, mm -hmm. down the road and and that might be that might be where, how we're going to benefit. It's just seeing this experience, uh, having this experience on the handbook, and then applying it towards how we uh, architect that like configuration step that's probably going to come later this year. Yeah. From from my initial investigations and like one or two comments with Jean is like the direction feels like it's going to be applied to all pages. So all pages will have this information because the way the code owners files works is like if if there's no one at this level, then it like jumps up to the parent and it goes up all the way to like the root. Um, so it does feel like that's something that it is something that could be uh, generated um, when the site gets uh, built. So that does make sense in a static uh, site generator kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. um, from a, like a visual standpoint thing, um, envisioning kind of sort of like how news articles have like, like published by Eric and like, you know, like a head or something like mm -hmm. this is probably where we get like bylines and things like that from the publishing world. Um, mm -hmm more and more uh, geared towards what we need to show, but it does, there's a familiar pattern that we could probably leverage and probably surface in a way that's obvious, but not obvious at the same time, because you don't want to like get smacked with that all the time because the value is the content. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a good point because we could end up shoving a lot of stuff and then you have to scroll a bunch to, to actually see any content, which is not ideal. Um, so yeah, I think this is a good thing to be thinking about over the next few weeks. And then uh, maybe what it is, is like we have a solution in place so that when we're ready to, to ship in the handbook, uh, we have a place to put the static site editor and it'll mm -hmm. feel natural um, instead of just like, what's this new floating button somewhere that you know came out of nowhere and is only on some pages. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, that's it. That's all I had. Um, hmm. uh, anything else on your mind, uh, this, this week? Um, no, I, I pinged you, uh, offline about, uh, solution validation. Um, for some reason, uh, like in my head, I, 
I read things wrong. I was like solution validation. I felt what we were doing was like post code and post like milestone release. Then we did solution validation. Um, reading deeper into it, it confirmed my thinking that yes, solution validation happens before development and build. Um, mm -hmm. And then like, the first step in kind of like assessing whether something needs to be solution validated is whether you feel confident or not in the direction. So it's a discussion between you and I to determine whether we need to get something validated. Yeah. And I feel like some of the stuff that we're rolling out for 13.1, 13 13.2, 13 um, it feels like straightforward. Like it feels like we need to just bring it up to a certain level before we start picking more. But I feel like beyond that is where there's different paths that we could take and this is where yeah. we need to get some solution validation. So yeah, happy to help uh, in any ways, like whether that's like uh, filling out the um, solution validation issue with more content to help you out with that. Um, yeah, like my, that's where my head's kind of at looking future wise. Um, so I, I know that you said that you're going to try to make some time this week to look at it, but remember mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you can just like toss me a line and just say like, I think these three, um, and then I can run with it if need be. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, gonna make some time for it. And even if it's just a few minutes to, to give you some something to work off of for sure. And and I agree with your your assessment on the, the ones that really should have validation. Like um, right now what we're focused on it's very tactical, very um, clear, clear value. But where we, where we were coming up against, you know, managing multiple commits and and showing MR status and bringing some of that information into the status editor that could go in a bunch of different directions. And um, we definitely need to feel a little more confident about that. Um, yeah, and there's there's a I think there's a few opportunities. And so I'll I'll try and summarize the ones i mean you did a good job summarizing those but i'll see i'll try and think if there's any others and then we'll just get issues created for them and start working on them start plugging away mm -hmm. yeah and yeah just wanted to re reiterate you like don't need to feel that you need to fill it all out um by yourself like i'm, I'm here for help appreciate it well um i guess that's at the end of our agenda and our time. Um, good chatting as always. I will stop the recording. Bye everyone. Yeah.